Well, the mad lad actually did it. Faker and T1 have made history by doing something that no other team has managed to do in the history of the LCK, a perfect split. 18 wins, zero losses. Here's how it happened. All right, as T1 have set a new record, we're kind of approaching a record ourselves here at the Score Esports. Two million subscribers. If you're not one of that number, then please consider subscribing and like the video if you enjoyed it. Bless you. So the other week, I reported that T1 and Faker had reached an important milestone, 15 wins and zero losses, breaking the previous record of 14 and 0 that was set by Faker with SKT1 back in 2015. So after Faker broke his own seven-year-old record, the next question was, could he and T1 go one step further and achieve the perfect split? The answer was, of course they could. Now Nexus Turrets will go down T1, an absolutely historical moment. 18 and 0 for the first time in the LCK, and they tie 2015 Summer SKT and Darm 1 2020 Summer. Two teams that then went on to win worlds at plus 29 points in the season. Now, if you've been keeping up with the LCK over the past few months, you'll know this was no fluke. T1 have looked like absolute monsters this split. Only Gen G seemed to be even remotely in the same league as them, but of course, they were 2 0'd by T1 just like everyone else. Now, just to clarify here, the LCK does best of threes in its regular season games. T1 have technically lost individual games while beating teams 2 1 in a best of three. Their match record is perfect, though. So, why is this all such a big deal? Well, to put it simply, this sh almost never happens. Fnatic did it once way back in 2015. PSG Talon did it too last summer in the PCS region. In North America, teams like TSM, Cloud9, and Immortals have come incredibly close with 17 and one splits, but nobody has achieved that perfect run. The point is, it's rare. Now, some people might say that the best of three format in the LCK gives you a little bit of a safety net because you can lose one individual game and still take home the dub, but nah. I don't think it's any less impressive. They still had to beat a team twice to register a single win, and they did it against the best Korean teams in the world. One asterisk for some people, though, has been that the LCK has been hit hard by COVID. We've seen a lot of teams have to field substitutes because one or more of their main roster are sick. This was the case with Gen G, T1's only real competitor this split. They had to field subs in both of their losses to T1, and this has some people questioning whether or not the perfect split would have happened if they and other teams were at full strength. It's an important detail to note, but I don't think it takes anything away from this incredible achievement. Now, Faker, naturally, will get a lot of attention for all of this, and there's a couple of reasons why. Firstly, for seven years, it was his record that was the highest bar to aim for in the LCK, and now he's raised that bar to basically perfection. Secondly, it's Faker. The unkillable Demon King story has at times felt like it's being written by anime writers who don't know the meaning of the word subtlety. Faker is League's GOAT, but for the past five years, he's struggled to achieve the same kind of glory as he did in the first half of his career. Now, of course, when you win Worlds three times before your 21st birthday, that's an incredibly high bar to set for yourself. Unfortunately, the occasional domestic successes he's had since have never really compared to his international ones. Now though, there is genuine talk of him and T1 going on to make a serious run at Worlds. And that's not just sentimental wishfulness, there is somewhat of a precedent for this. This team finished the split with a plus 29 game differential. SKT did that in 2015, Damwon Gaming did it in 2020, and both of those teams then went on to win Worlds that year. So, things are potentially looking more promising for Faker on the international stage now in a way they haven't done for years, but the question is, why now? What is different? Well, he's usually found himself surrounded by top talent over the years, but this team is something special. Every one of these young players has the ability to carry. Faker doesn't have to play perfectly every game because each of these guys has stepped up this year. There's no dead weight in this team. Zayus and Ona are solid as f***. 
Carrier is a genius of engaging, and my personal favorite is Guma Yushi. We could make a highlight reel just for this kid. The 80 carry star broke an LCK record himself this split by racking up 219 kills. In fact, he's only the fourth player in LCK history to ever achieve over 200 kills in a single split, and he's still only 20. It's been a weekend of looking at the past, at old records being broken, at how this team has come together, and at Faker's nine-year career so far. But now, people will rightly look to the future and ask the next obvious question, how far can this team go? They still need to win playoffs to qualify for MSI. They still need to do well in summer to make it to Worlds, and if they get there, it ain't gonna be a walk in the park. But people are starting to whisper about them actually winning Worlds. To do that, it's gonna take something truly special. But after a record-breaking split like that, I wouldn't be surprised if they did. There's no dead weight in this team. Z there's no dead weight in this team. Zayus and Ona are solid as f There's no dead weight in this game. There's no dead weight in this team. Zayus and Ona are solid as f Carrier is a genius of engaging. 